Okay, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being on the call. Uh, really appreciate uh, seeing your faces. It's always great to put some names to faces and uh, yeah, get to see who we've been talking to, who we've been interacting with. Uh, and thank you guys so much for being on the call today. The purpose of uh, today, uh, of this webinar, is just, uh, just to answer some, some of your questions. Uh, we know that a lot of things have been changing, a lot of things uh, have been semi unstable uh, just within each and every person's life. And uh, we don't want the admissions process to be an extra burden for you guys either. So we wanted to take some time just to, to speak with you guys, answer some of your questions. Uh, we, you, so many of you had already sent us questions ahead of time, so uh, we're going to go ahead and go through those with you guys. And if you have any further questions, uh, and we have time at the end, then our hope is to uh, provide some time to, for you to ask those as well. Uh, before we get started uh, answering some of the questions, um, I wanted to go around and, and, and introduce uh, the two other people uh, who work here in the office, uh, Sarah and Katie. Uh, they'll be sharing a little bit about what their role is here in, in uh, the, the admissions team and what you need to know uh, during this time, um, some of the things that have changed uh, within, within our office and uh, just trying to be a resource to you during this time. So uh, I'll go ahead and pass it to Sarah and then uh, Katie can share and then I'll share a little bit about uh, what I'm doing. Thanks, Danny. Thank you, everybody, so much for taking time out of your day to join us. And um, I know there's a lot of questions out there, not just about following your your dream or you know your calling to seminary, but about what today is going to look like, what this week is going to look like. And um, I just want to reiterate that we're here for you. We've been praying for you and your loved ones, um, and we will continue to do so. Uh, we are just so so grateful for the opportunity to, to gather and do a little bit of um sleuthing together uh as we navigate what this new territory looks like so uh you know one theme that just continues to to pop up is just the ever-growing need for leaders in the church right now and in the very near future that now is that time to lean into that calling that God has on your life. If you are feeling called to pastoral ministry, man, the world needs pastors right now. If you feel like you're being called into counseling, let me tell you, the mental health field is just super ripe and <laughs> harvest is plenty and the workers are few. So it's now's the time in, to lean into that. I'm um, seeing with missionaries, you know, uh, the landscape might look different uh, right now, but uh, the, the world needs to know the good news. So um, we're excited to be here. We're excited to help you um, figure out the logistics of that calling. And yeah, and again, our team is here for you. So um, our, just logistically, so everyone knows, I'm sure just like you, we were moved to work in one office together. <laughs> to work home remotely, uh, transitioning all of our processes in the matter of uh, less than 24 hours. So um, I apologize if, you know, sometimes communication may have been a little bit slow, um, but we, we, we regrouped. We've got this awesome team of student workers who are still helping us amidst all of this and their life, life upheavals. So um, we're, we are here for you. So uh, yeah, that's my little intro. Feel free to um, yeah, reach out to us, email or call. Um, we do have our phones uh, available as well. So Katie, do you want to share a little bit about guest services? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm Katie. I'm the guest services coordinator for admissions. Um, it's great to see some of you that have visited campus before again. And uh, like Danny mentioned, great to put names to faces of those that we haven't met yet. Um, yeah, so I mean, as, as I'm sure you know, campus visits also are not happening right now. So um, that has shifted my job a lot. Um, but we have put together a virtual campus visit experience. Um, so if you have not had a chance to visit campus yet, or if there are things that you would like to experience again, if you have, um, we would love for you to sign up for a virtual visit. Uh, 
I'll post the link to register in the chat. And then once you sign up there, we'll send you a link to the virtual visit page and you can set up a rep meeting over Zoom, meet with a current student over Zoom. Uh, in the next couple of days, hopefully the next day or two, we'll have an option for you to visit classes over Zoom as well. Um, and you can watch chapel. We do chapel via Facebook Live every Tuesday and Wednesday. That's still happening. Um, and you can also watch some pre-recorded chapels as well. So we would love to do whatever we can to help make it possible for you to experience campus and get a taste of community life at Gordon Conwell. Yes, and some of the things that I'm currently working on, uh, just so, so you guys know, I, I served as an admissions representative for about a year and a half, so many of you guys may still know me from that capacity. I recently transitioned into a different role, the alumni engagement officer, which is still recruiting students uh, through uh, alumni. Uh, however, these days, what I've really been focusing on is, is um, hosting webinars. So what we're doing is we're doing our best to make sure uh, that uh, we don't disappear, uh, that we're still, uh, we still have opportunities to in connect and interact with you guys uh, face to face in person, the best means possible. So uh, we had a webinar last week on uh, caring for your campus during uh, COVID-19. Uh, this week we're talking about um, a Q&A with admissions, helping you guys navigate this process. And at the end of the month, we're looking to host a, a third webinar uh, with our president, uh, Scott Sundquist. He's going to be joining us on a call. Uh, you guys will have the opportunity to meet him, to hear from him, to ask him any questions uh, that you'd like. And uh, just to uh, feel like we haven't disappeared, like we're still here uh, and, and we're helping uh, and, and we're hoping to, to stay connected with you in whatever way that we can. Uh, for, those of you, for those of you as well who may still have questions about your application, the application process, uh, I'm still uh, taking meetings as an admissions representative. So if you do have questions and you want to go over some, some logistics, please feel free to set up a time with me. Um, I will send my email actually in the, in the link uh, in, in the chat below and then you can just email me directly and I'd love to set up a time with you to talk more about uh, this process with you. So um, yeah, uh, Sarah, would you like to go ahead and get us started with the questions? Sure. Yeah. So thank you guys. A bunch of you submitted questions ahead of time. That's super helpful. So we were able to kind of think through, um, you know, what you guys are thinking about and help us help answer some of those questions ahead of time. Um, so what we're going to do is maybe I'll answer one, Katie will answer one, and Danny will answer one. We'll kind of rotate through. And then I think we should have some time at the end. And if you are thinking of questions that didn't get answered, please feel free to hang on to those and you can chat them in um, at the end. So first question, a lot of you guys um, are wondering, can I still move on campus this summer? Um, and yes, the answer is yes. Our, at this present moment, um, and as you probably all know and understand, things do change. But at this moment, our Student Life Services is planning and excited about having you move onto campus this summer. Um, we do ask that if you are planning on doing that, if you're moving to Massachusetts from a different state, that you would honor the request of our governor that if you come from out of state that you would self quarantine for two weeks. So please do plan that into your process. You know, if you're looking to come um, with your family, just be being mindful of that request. So you're planning out courses and student orientation, not arriving the day before and heading straight into student orientation. That's really, it, it does help protect our current community that's there as well and uh, all the other new students that will be moving onto campus. But um, those 14 days are, are important as of right now. Again, if in the summer that gets lifted, wonderful. We will be sure to communicate that to you. But as of right now, please do plan on that. Um, and just a reminder that every single um, dorm or apartment does have residence life coordinators. Those are similar to like RDs and an undergrad uh, institution. And those folks are excited about having you join their community. They're praying for you. Um, and they will be there for you even in those first two weeks to help you get connected to resources. You will not be alone in that process. Um, and our Dean of Students is just fantastic. She's already helping them think creatively about how to be supporting you and welcoming you into the new, new the community as a new member. Um, so please know 
that it is a for real community. They're all reimagining what that looks like at the moment. Um, but there are there are leaders there in the different residential settings that are going to be available for you as a resource. Katie, do you want to handle the next? Sure. Um, yeah, the next question was, will there be more online class options in the midst of coronavirus? And if so, will these continue in the future? Uh, short answer is yes. Uh, right now, all of our spring classes are online, as well as all of our full summer and summer one courses have officially been um, ha have been placed online. And we are assuming that for the duration of any kind of government issued stay at home requests, all classes would be available online. Um, and in a recent statement, our president, uh, President Sunquist, he announced that we hope to continue with building out our online model uh, to make it more accessible and more dynamic over the coming years. So our hope is that this is a good kickstart to offering um, a wider range of classes online. Absolutely. And the next question that we had asked uh, is uh, when do we sign up for classes and are there academic advisors that will guide us in that process? Uh, for those, uh, so for um, those who are looking to come in the summer uh, term, uh, course registration is available at this point. So you can register uh, for summer courses uh, right now. Uh, all applicants who have officially reserved as, a, an, as an official Gordon Conwell students uh, has access to register for those courses through CAMS. So if you've already been accepted, uh, the next step would be to submit your notification of intent form. Once that's submitted, and you will officially become a student, you'll receive your student ID, uh, and then uh, the information for you to log on to CAMS, and you can register for courses right away. Uh, that is for summer term. Uh, in regards to fall 2020, uh, the registration for that will open uh, around mid to late June. So we still have uh, probably about a good two months before that happens. So mid to late June is when you can begin to register for fall 2020 courses. Uh, to the part that asks about uh, academic advisors, is are, are there uh, academic advisors that are available to guide you through the process? Uh, yes, uh, so you are able to find academic advising. Uh, we have an academic advising sessions available through our registration office. Uh, and we will send you the link to that uh, in the chat uh, below as well, so that you can have access to how to sign up for academic advising. And that's, that, is, that is handled through our registration office. Just to quick clarify, those advising appointments are only available to students who are reserved for fall or summer. So we're actually not gonna chat it in the, and like we'll email you guys. Yeah, um, our registration office is a little bit limited in, the, at, in terms of capacity at the moment. And so, um, we are actually able to help guide those who are not officially reserved as students. So um, I know Danny offered to be meeting with anyone who's looking for a, a meeting with an admissions rep, and that would be a good step. If you haven't applied yet or are still kind of discerning whether or not Gordon Conwell is your um, next step, then um, Danny would be the best person to have an advising session with, and, and he's happy to do that. So, yeah. Um, the next question is, with additional financial constraints, how can I make seminary as affordable as possible? And this is a great question. Um, first off, we would love to have a personal, individualized conversation with each of you. If that's something you're interested in, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Each of us have Calendly links, so you can schedule an appointment with us and we can talk through your specific situation. But right now, I'll just kind of go over a few points that I think everybody should just take into consideration right now. Um, ways to make your degree more affordable, more accessible, cut off time and money. So. Um, the first thing to think about is advanced standing or transfer credit. So if you have taken classes at a different graduate school, a different seminary, please don't hesitate to fill out that transfer credit evaluation form that's available through our registration office. Um, if you have gone to an undergraduate school that is a CCCU member, um, and if you have a question about that, we're happy to answer it. You are welcome to apply for advanced standing 
Um, and that is, uh, I believe we are able to grant up to eight classes off of an MDiv and up to five classes off of an MA. So that is huge. You know, if you did biblical studies or Christian ministry as an undergrad, there's a, a good possibility, um, you know, depending on GPA and things like that, but that you would qualify for advanced standing um, and be able to shave off a significant amount of tuition and time. So, um, Related to that, uh, if you are an MDiv student and you have been serving as a pastor, I believe in a paid position, then you are as well welcome to apply for advanced standing for your mentored ministry portion. And that is about six credits off of your um, MDiv. So that as well saves you time and money. Um, so please consider those, those as well. Um, in terms of scholarships, right now, I'm just going to be talking about fall 2020 and what's available at this moment. Um, so in, if you're a domestic student, there are still some uh, scholarship opportunities. The biggest one that is available at the moment is the Graham Scholarship. That is $800 off per course, and it's available for the first 50 domestic students who plan to study full-time. You can do that online or in person. So, you know, depending on what you're thinking, that's available. As of this webinar, they are, there are still Graham scholarships available. That, that's first come, first serve. I, so I can't guarantee that that would remain so. But um, we definitely highly encourage you to consider that if you're looking to, to do full-time study. If you are looking to do part-time study um, or the Graham scholarships are all taken, then the trustee scholarship is a great opportunity as well. That is $525 off per course, and it's available to any domestic student that's in good academic standing. So basically, the one qualification is that you are not on academic probation. Um, and it's a, you know, I think about 25% off of tuition, so $525 off per course. If you are a pastor or lay person connected to a church in New England, we also have a scholarship that's available for you. And that's just tied to the heart and the dedication to seeing the church flourish here in New England. That is the local lay person or local pastor scholarship. For lay people, you can save 30% off tuition. For pastors, you can save 40% off tuition. Um, and that is, the requirement for that is that you would just need a letter of recommendation from your pastor or elder confirming your status at the church. Uh, and then the last opportunity for domestic students is we have a number of partnerships with ministries and mission organizations. So just to name a few, um, Crew, InterVarsity, um, Surge, uh, African Inland Mission, um, a number of them. Um, you're able to receive 40% off your tuition as well, and we would just need a letter of recommendation from your supervisor confirming your position with the organization. Um, all those, the full list can be found on our website as well. Um, for international students, there are a few more options right now too. Um, we're going to get to the difficulties of becoming a student um, as an international student a little bit later, but in terms of financing, um, there's one scholarship that, uh, actually two scholarships that are available at the moment. The first one is the Global Church. That's $525 off per course. Again, available to individuals who are looking to do full or part-time study um, and who are in good academic standing. The other scholarship is we have one scholarship that's available. I believe it's $10,000 per year, and it's for an individual from South Africa or Zimbabwe. So if you happen to be from one of those countries, please let us know, and we would love to have you apply. It's brand new, and um, yeah, a great opportunity for someone from one of those, those countries. Um, yeah, two other really important uh, considerations for you to, to be thinking about are the partnership program. That is an awesome um, program that is available to domestic students, so U.S. residents or citizens, and it is a, it provides a full tuition scholarship. Um, you do do some fundraising towards that scholarship 
but you also gain uh, biblical stewardship skills. You are able to do uh, the fundraising as a team. You get some really great training with the director of the program. Her name's Erica, um, and she is fantastic, and I really highly encourage you to apply for that program. Uh, about 60% of Gordon-Conwell's graduates graduate with zero tuition debt and that is mostly thanks to the partnership program its goal is to get you into ministry into churches whether they be tiny rural churches or mega big city churches doesn't matter but that you would not be burdened by educational debt so um, it's a great vision it's a very unique program that's specifically to gordon conwell and we highly recommend that you apply to that there is still time to do so. The, the deadline to apply is now May 15th for that, for the fall 2020. And just a, one little quick note too, is that our financial aid team is available as well to help you. Um, they are able to help you go through the process of applying for loans, if that's something that you are interested in. Uh, we highly recommend trying all options before you look at loans, um, but they, we are able to issue federal um, student loans. So that is something as well you can consider. So, okay. I spoke enough. Pass it along to the next person. Um, so the next question was just about the general admissions process and whether or not there have been any changes to the timeline because of COVID-19. And uh, fortunately, there have not been many changes for the majority of our degrees. The deadline to reserve for the fall still remains the final ad drop date um, of the fall semester, which is September 18th. Um, our Master of Arts in Counseling and PHM in Biblical Studies application deadlines are the same as of right now, and those vary depending on whether you're a domestic student or international student, so we could get those to you if you need. Um, the biggest deadline that has changed is that the partnership program deadline has been extended, so it was April 15th, and now the date has been pushed back to May 15th, so you do have a little bit longer to apply for partnership. Um, and then just a helpful note, our housing application deadline and financial aid application deadlines are both priority deadlines, uh, which just means that priority is given to the first people who apply, but you can still apply after those dates have passed. So both of those um, applications are still open. So it looks like we have a few questions left and we're doing pretty good on time. So at this moment, feel free to begin to think about some questions if you have any, uh, and we'll be more, more than happy uh, to help you uh, with them when we finish. I'll go ahead and uh, jump to the next question that was asked. Uh, this is a more specific question, which was if online classes continue through the fall, uh, how will the Hamilton uh, campus be distinguishable in its curriculum from that of Charlotte? Uh, so for those of you who don't know, we have four different campuses here at Gordon-Conwell. We have uh, the Boston campus, uh, the Hamilton, Hamilton campus, uh, the Charlotte campus, and, and the Jacksonville campus. As far as how they'll be distinguishable as we move online, particularly Hamilton and Charlotte, um, one of the main things uh, uh, that you'll find is that uh, we have different uh, faculty members uh, at both campuses. So uh, in signing up for online classes, you can take um, online classes with um, faculty from from Hamilton or, or, or from Charlotte. Uh, it's also important to say um, that one of the distinctions between uh, Hamilton campus and Charlotte campus is that uh, Hamilton is a residential campus, whereas Charlotte is a non-residential campus. So that also serves the nature of students. Those who study at Hamilton are usually full-time students, uh, whereas um, at Charlotte, they're usually part-time working in pastoral ministry during their time. So as far as when classes are offered, Hamilton online courses will most likely be offered during the day, um, whereas Charlotte courses are usually offered uh, evenings, some, some during the day, but mostly evenings and weekends. Uh, so that's an important distinction for you to make. Uh, as well as uh, some of the differences between Hamilton and, and Charlotte's, uh, we do offer uh, some different degree programs at Hamilton. Uh, because it is our main campus, we do offer uh, a more degree program such as the MA in Christian Studies, which is 100% online, uh, our Master's of Arts in Global Leadership, Master's of Arts in, in uh, Biblical Languages, Master's in Spiritual Formation, Church History, 
um, theology, intercultural studies, and uh, the THM. So those are uh, just uh, some of the differences uh, that we offer here at the Hamilton campus. Uh, but as a Gordon-Conwell student, it's important for you to know that you are able to take courses at any of our campuses. Uh, so if you were a student at Hamilton, you could take courses at Boston, you could take courses at um, Charlotte, at Jacksonville, as well as our HMP program, Hispanic Ministries program, which is a very international-based program. Uh, and if you're a Charlotte at Charlotte, uh, a student at Charlotte, you could take courses at any other campus as well uh, online. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, and just a quick note on that, um, the little bit of a difference is if you're a MAKO student, you can only take your counseling courses at another KCREP accredited um, school. So it, for example, you could take some counseling courses at Charlotte if you're a Hamilton student and vice versa, but our Boston campus is not KCREP accredited. So um, you could not take your core counseling classes at Boston. So. Just to make that very clear, I don't want to set bad expectations for our peer counseling students. Um, an important question that came in in regards to international students. So with US embassies not currently issuing visas, what particular guidance do you have for international students? Um, our biggest encouragement to you is to remain in communication with Julie Nichols. She's our international student advisor. She is amazing. She is well aware of the situation. We have been in communication with her these last few weeks, and she is in rema remains in communication with government officials. So she's our official um, international student visa processor, um, and she will be able to reach out to you the minute that things are available. I know she is starting to process some of the paperwork that you're going to be needing for when those interviews do become available. Um, but I, you know, our, our biggest recommendation is that you reach out to her, rely on her. She's going to be your advocate um, in terms of that, that process. Um, in the meantime, uh, we would just highly recommend that you also consider possibly starting your courses online if the visa interviews do not become available. Um, we deeply, deeply love and value our international student body, and we want you still in our classes because we are committed to the global church, and that's you are you are the global church. So um, we are praying for you. We're praying that those interview times do become available. And we would still love to have you um, be a part of the Gordon Conwell community, even if it is uh, remotely for a, a certain amount of time. Um, but yeah, that would be our biggest recommendation. Remain in communication with Julie and be considering online courses at the moment. Um, similarly, for international students, uh, someone asked about TOEFL tests. Um, they are currently being canceled or postponed because of the coronavirus, um, and someone wanted to know how we would consider those applicants. Um, so right now, we are exploring some alternative options to the TOEFL because those are not being administered at the moment. So if an online solution becomes available, we will definitely be reaching out for international students who still need the TOEFL requirement. Um, if you have completed your undergrad degree in the United States or the UK, please feel free to send your transcript to our admissions email, uh, admref at gcts.edu, and we can consider you for a TOEFL waiver interview. Um, and yeah, that would be a great option in the meantime. But we'll definitely reach out as soon as we have any more information about ways that we can um, help you with the TOEFL requirement. Okay, and I believe that that was the last question uh, that we had submitted. Um, at this time, we'd like to open it up uh, to, to you guys. If you have any questions now, uh, we would love to answer that for the next uh, few minutes. Um, if not, that's that's fine. You can end the call, but we just want to give this opportunity as well for anyone who has questions. So if you have a question, feel free to unmute your mic uh, and ask it, and we'll do our very best to answer. Hello, uh, this is Chang Rui uh, from uh, Texas. Uh, can you provide that the list of scholarships that Sarah just discussed? 
and then how to approach those uh, scholarships. Yes, absolutely. We can send that uh, as part of the email as well. Uh, that, that we'll be sending out. So let me write that down. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Yep, and uh, my second question is a brief question. So I've applied for the summer online class. Uh, would be, what time would be the uh, acceptance would be coming out? So in May, April, May, I think the, start, the class would be starting in June, I think. That's a great question. So um, right now, the, we've traditionally given a two-week time frame from when your application is submitted for review um, until when you receive an answer, with a little bit of caveat that sometimes there are crazier seasons. Um, right now, we are in kind of a crazy season. Uh, the biggest thing that we are we're still working on transitioning is sometimes we have received physical transcripts and so um, if a transcript was mailed, you know, recently, um, we do have someone checking the, our mail. Um, thankfully, there, you know, there's dorms in our building where the mail room is. So even though we physically can't go there, part of our team can. Um, and so they're able to check and get those to us. So sometimes there's a little bit of a lack of um, being able to receive if it was a physical transcript. Um, and this is a good reminder time for me to tell everyone if you haven't submitted a transcript, please send it digitally um, because we've moved everything to a digital format. So if you get it issued officially if you have the ability to do that through your undergrad that's great if you cannot do that you're welcome to submit an unofficial copy to us and we can process your application with that unofficial copy um, and if you're admitted it would just be pending receipt of final or official transcript so we just need to send in an official one um, to our registration office before you start classes so um so I, I'm I know, I think I've seen your name, Changri, and I think that we are, we're in the midst of um, locating your transcript. I think it's in the office. So <laughs> they are, So you should be receiving uh, an answer within, I would say that within the next week should definitely be feasible. So please don't worry about the, the time between now and June. You'll, you should receive a, an answer shortly. Great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? <clears throat> If we've also submitted um, our, <laughs> sorry, if we've submitted, so I also submitted my transcript already and it was also by mail. Do you want me to like send you guys just like an email letting you know that mine's also by mail so that you can watch for it? Or do you want me to resend it electronically? Do you guys have any preferences as far as that goes? Yeah, hi, Asmin. Uh, uh, I think uh, I think uh, so our team is in the midst of scanning everything all of the files digitally so we should have it if it was already received we should have that in our in our um, in our files and it, ho and it should be digital very shortly if it if it isn't already a portion of them um, here's the back picture so we a couple of us were going into the office the week after we were, went remotely and then like that our state said no more unofficial business and so we had a very quick window and we scanned about half of the files um, and put them into a safe digital format um, so we're just working on getting the other half um, and it's possible but um, if for some reason that's great to know so if you do have a digital copy of it if everything else is in then feel free to send that along um, but chances are we do have it saved as a, a digital version yeah yeah okay i just got a chat that our team member did scan a bunch more yesterday too so yeah <laughs> So again, thank you for your grace and your patience with that. It's been quite the learning curve, but um, again, yeah, I think we're in a good point now. Yeah. Thank Blake, you. I had a question as well. Yeah, hey there, I'm Blake um, from Virginia. My question's for Sarah. 
I think you had mentioned for mentored ministry that we could take some hours off. We have ministry experience. Um, I think maybe you had mentioned church experience. Does, does parachurch ministry experience apply towards that as well or no? I say apply for it. Like, you know, why not? So um, I think what we can do, I know Danny already started making a list of things we can follow up with on that follow-up email. We can, there's a form that our mentored ministry office has shared with us. that If you want to fill it out and reach out to Dr. Horvath and let her know, yeah, you've been involved for many years um, and would this count? And I I think it's worth asking. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I also have one more question. Um, When it comes to moving during the summer, would we be able to request that maybe someone be able to help us uh, move stuff in or would that be unsafe? I don't, I don't want to be rude, but also no. um, so stuff is heavy at the same time. So, Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great question. I actually just talked to our Dean of Students this morning and that is the plan. So she said she just hired all the new RLCs for the next year and that is their goal is to be able to help you. Um, they'll figure out the best safest way to do that but again you're not alone and you're going to be able to get some help once you're here um if something changes drastically we would communicate that um but that is the plan right now awesome thank you very much yeah so i have a very hypothetical general question that's probably impossible to answer but um I think for me, I'm like very unknown with the future. Um, It's hard to envision like six months from now, like when you don't know what six weeks is going to be. So like, let's just say life gets back to normal and like for fall, like I'm on campus. If this happens again, um, I'm sure Gordon Conwell has talked through or tried to plan like if this happens again, like what uh, that would look like. Um, Can you speak to that at all? Yeah, I can share a little bit. So we do have a committee that, um, you know, uh, responds to emergencies. And so they were on it. And I think Gordon Conwell was one of the very first institutions in our area to really be responding, um, to push classes online. All staff went remote super quick. The same day that my kids got, um, went, you know, home and didn't go back to public school, Gordon Conwell had us working remotely. So, um, with that mindset of caring for our community, right? Because we're a pretty big community. Um, And so I think that that team is learning a lot from this experience um, and will be even able to respond in an even greater way, even though, to be honest, it's just the communication has been fantastic. Resources, you know, um, it's been, it was nearly daily at the beginning and now it's, you know, as needed. so I think that uh, you can rely on that leadership um, as well as, you know, Gordon Conwell is unique in that we heard some really sad stories about undergrad and folks getting kicked out of dorms and people just being alone without resources. And Gordon Conwell is a little bit different in that it's graduate school only. People sell their homes and move on campus. And these are apartment buildings that, you know, people live in with families and um, we, like a landlord would not be able to kick out uh, their families from an apartment, excuse me. So it's more a personal responsibility, self-quarantining, being responsible as a community. Um, And so I wouldn't imagine, you know, if the question is, how am I (laughs) supposed to move on campus if this does come up again in six months and then need to go home it, that wouldn't be the case they did encourage dorm students if you had a home to go to they encourage you to do so but there are still students living in our dorms because they they don't or they can't fly internationally or what have you and so um there is still uh folks living there and just being safe about it so um is there anything else ruth that would be helpful in thinking through uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I think I have wondered, should I start online in the fall and just kind of wait and see what happens um, or just, you know, full steam ahead and, you know, roll with it as it happens. So I'm just kind of very back and forth daily as to uh, that decision. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, I think it's going to be a personal decision, but um, we as an institution will absolutely communicate what, you know, what may change in terms of that. Um, but as of right now, we would love to have you join us in person if that's what is best for you. Yeah. Looks like we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, do we have any other questions left? I just have a couple questions. <laughs> just a couple questions about um, different contact points for some of the different things we talked about. Um, so when I was there, I just talked about um, just finding out about some transfer credit from another program that I did a few graduate courses in. Um, and so it's it would be MACO transfer credit, and it was from a K accredited school. Um, so one of my questions would just be, who would I contact to find out about that? Would it be a MACO specific person or just academic advisory or admissions? Yeah, so um, we can include the link to the transfer credit evaluation form that's run through our registration office. And so they would be your best contact for that. If they had specific questions about credit, KCREP. I know Natalie Crossan is our registrar and she um, does a really good investigation into what are these courses you're trying to, to bring over and really does consult the faculty on ones that she's not familiar with. So um, she can be your, your point person for that. Okay. Yeah. Great. I think my only other question about contact would just be, um, I know you guys talked about being willing to do like personal one-on-one -on -one meetings for people, um, just depending on like what our situations are and just kind of talking about a plan. And so I was just wondering who would the contact point be um, kind of for that? Is it is it you, Danny, or would it be somebody like different if a lot of our questions are also related to partnership program questions? Yeah, yeah, that's a great, that, that, that's a good question. So, uh, as far as the academic, uh, in a sense, admissions academic advising that I can do uh, can be as far as usually extends to um, looking at your degree programs, helping you uh, figure out what next steps are, understanding community life here on campus, um, and more more of the general questions. Um, I can I can usually go pretty in depth in them. Uh, if there is a very specific particular question within maybe like something like only the partnership uh, program would 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 be able to answer then I would I would definitely transfer you to that but I think as far as a starting point goes I'd be more than happy uh, and I think I'd definitely be the first person that you'd want to be in contact with for international students okay. as well I'm more than happy to to help you navigate that process when it comes to the specific details of, of the visa process and, and what is what exactly being issued by the, the government right now, uh, our international student uh, office definitely has much more knowledge and, and keeping up with that right now. So yeah, I'd say starting point, definitely contact me. I'd be more than happy to meet with anyone. Uh, and then I if, if uh, I do not have the answers, I know who to point you to, so. Okay, cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I believe uh, that's all the time that we have for today. Uh, thank you all for joining the call. Uh, I hope that this has been helpful for you and just helping you navigate uh, this admissions process during uh, the, the, the uh, COVID-19. Uh, so we're more than happy again to stay in contact with you. I send my email there in the chat, uh, as well as you can contact anyone in our admissions office, and we're more than happy to stay in contact with you. Uh, and we will send up a follow-up email uh, in regards to the, the links, uh, the forms, and the information uh, in regards to scholarships. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. Uh, does anyone have any final words? Sarah, do you I would love to just, here? yeah, I would just love to pray before we head out. Um, yeah, so thanks for joining, and I pray for us really quick. Jesus, we just thank you for um, the ability to gather together. Uh, we pray right now for wisdom, Father, that your Holy Spirit would be speaking to each person here as they um, discern their next steps, discern where you are calling them, discern where you can be using them for your kingdom, Father God. 
I pray that um, you would give them confidence and that you would open up miraculous doors and that, um, Father, that you would be using them for, for your good, for your, bringing your good news to this world right now, Lord. Um, we pray that you would just go with us in this next day, in this next week, in this next month, and that we would daily be reminded of your presence with us along the way and um, be reminded of the joy and the hope that we have in you and in your son. We just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.